healing. This is a succession. This is a 10-day progression of a wound. This filly sustained actually on Grand River Raceway. She never made a mistake training down. She's a super great filly, of course. She's going in the race. She's never made a break in training. She never made a break with the hobbles on. And at the top turn, my heart just about fell out of my chest as I was watching it at home. And she went down. The driver went down. Anyway, the driver was fine. Um, and she is fine as well. So this is what happened. She ended up with some a series of little puncture wounds here that ended up, she ended up with some edema forming down here, a seroma, and then that got infected. I've got a graphic video of that party trick going on with that coming out of the wound. And then this is how it healed after that. The goal of wound healing is to put down new skin, basically, to fix the defect. So that defect can be a short distance as with a fresh wound and if we stitch it close. So the laceration that's a slice that's in an area with, an, we'll talk about this again in a, an upcoming slide, an area with enough tissue to close that. And they've stitched it up nicely here. So that's a fairly clean wound high up. It's not been in the manure, presumably. And they were OK with closing that. So the tissue only has a little bit of a defect to fix in that case. Or it can be a wide distance. And distance is variable by time and amount of dirt. So distance increases with the amount of skin lost. So if you have, I saw one that looked like it had been a quote unquote degloving uh, wound where actually skin is torn down and away as though you're taking off a pair of gloves. So the amount of skin lost or retracted. Anybody have a, a nice tight pair of jeans that they remember trying to wiggle into? Um, if you then cut those jeans, would you be able to close those jeans back up? Are they so tight that that jean material is never going to meet in the middle? Yeah, in my 20s, I did that. <laughs> Nothing got between me and my Calvins. Um, anyway, you're not going to be able to stitch that up, probably. There's various ways of trying to do suture patterns that will help you make, minimize that. But the legs have very little extra tissue on them. And so they will be like that tight pair of jeans and tend to pull apart. Time. So you can't stitch dried out tissue because it's dead, and you can't stitch over dirt and infection. So time can be a problem in these things. So too wide and dirty to stitch. That's definitely what happened with this filly. There were full thickness punctures that then became infected secondarily, and it was managed open as we say. There was no bandage ever applied to this. They just flushed it every day with uh, the hose, sterile saline. And then this one just didn't get discovered in time. So this is necrotic material. There's a bit of granulation tissue in here. It's lumpy, bumpy. It's not that nice bed of relatively smooth, pink, nice tissue. This hair has been sticking into the wound. I can guarantee that this flesh here, this skin tissue, is dried up. If you try and put a stitch through that, it just rips through. Four stages of wound healing. We go through inflammation first. And when we receive, any of us, including horses, receives a cut or a wound, initially the small blood vessels constrict. They go smaller, and that happens naturally because the body itself is trying to protect itself from bleeding out. Remember, I was holding that bag up. so. The blood vessels constrict to try and diminish the amount of blood leaving the body. After that, though, the blood vessels dilate to let all the good stuff back into the area, the cells, the proteins that are going to feed the baby cells that are going to grow in and try and cover up that wound. So these inflammatory proteins call in the cells that deal with the dirt and bacteria and try and move them to the outside of the body. Debridement is the next stage, and that's where the pus and stuff comes in. Pus is not necessarily bad so long as it's brought to the surface and goes away. And that's where our dressing and our absorbent layer help us. They pull that stuff. Animal Intex pulls the pus and the dirt and helps that wound to heal and debride itself and makes that nice, healthy bed of granulation tissue that we were already discussing so that the new cells have a healthy area to grow over and fix the wound. So the next part is the granulation tissue. We've just said this is OK granulation tissue. There's still this yellow crap 
sorry, this yellow material, this debris. Um, and it's the first time, it's a miracle actually. Um, there's still pus and debris and necrotic tissue in there, so it's not a perfect bed of granulation tissue. But those new blood vessels nourish the cells that are trying to keep, creep across and fix that wound. So here's a nicer bed of granulation tissue. And so the cells creep in and fix that wound. You can see it's smaller already. Maturation, there's a lot of new skin cells that have come in here. And there's also cells in there that make scar tissue, right? And that helps to pull the wound edges together. So it's not just the cells coming in and filling the gap, it's that they physically pull the sides of those tight genes together. And then if we can't fix that defect completely, the body just puts down scar tissue. So I haven't actually seen, this was 10 days after the wound occurred. And um, my husband had put some of his own cream that he makes. Um, yeah, it keeps the flies. I'm not trying to push it, but it, it actually works really well. So that has helped that heal up quite a bit. I haven't seen her. I think she just has a little hairline scar there now. But there's enough tissue in this area, even though she's moving, that it wouldn't pull that wound. But if this wound had occurred on a distal limb, that would have been a totally different story, right? And repair. Like I say, new blood vessels come in, support and nourish the new growing skin cells. And I wanted to repeat this because horses are really bad at this particular section of the events. So particularly on their legs, there just isn't that much blood supply. So the blood supply comes through the back of the leg and little fingers of blood vessels go around to the front. There's not that much available blood supply to the area. So that's one reason they're bad at it and there's not a lot of skin and soft tissue. It's like the tight jeans. They're gonna constantly be pulling apart naturally. And if the, if the wound is moving because the joint is flexing, that's also going to pull it apart. And so that's why they place bandages like this to try and prevent the joint from moving and pulling that apart. So this one is quite a rigid bandage, I can tell, because they've gone way high up from the knee and they've got way low down from the knee. And that's just, the horse is gonna be walking like this rather than this and pulling that wound. So the other part of the equation is that their cells that do the repair process, the inflammatory proteins that come in, those are also not as good as other species. And this is where ponies and horses definitely are not the same species. Because ponies are good at this, horses are bad at this. So that is the other reason that they end up with that proud flesh forming, because they just get into this phase of chronic inflammation and putting down granulation tissue and that, that becomes a really big vicious circle for horses, not so much in other species. And then of course, because they're standing around in it in their stall, manure is always the enemy of these bandages. So we always wanna keep the bandage clean, dry as possible. So the reason for bandaging, like I keep saying, is to protect the process of this wound healing or to assist in debridement, sucking away the pus and the other stuff that's going on so that it speeds the process up. And a poor bandaging job or an improperly placed bandage can cause more harm than good. And so, sorry, I should have, I had a trigger alert at the beginning of this and I took it off. I thought that was a little over the top. But I don't know if you can see it. This is the hoof of the horse. It's a little bright in here. That's the hoof and the tiny little pastern here and then somebody has, I don't know, put giant watermelons on either side. This is very bad exuberant granulation tissue or proud flesh. So this horse wouldn't have been able to walk. Um, a veterinarian wasn't involved in the management of this wound. And this is just what resulted from it. It's bloody, it's necrotic, there's pus and the horse may have been euthanized because of this. What they would have to do is cut that all back. And yeah, and that ends up being quite gory. I don't have a photo of that. You'll be happy. <laughs> and this one, the owner had good intentions, but they didn't listen to their veterinarian. And, and they, this had gone all the way down to bone. So the granulation tissue has come in. But you can see, remember that nice bed of granulation tissue that was smooth-ish and pink? And there was none of this yellow business. That's pus, that's necrotic tissue. It's lumpy, bumpy, and it's not healthy and the skin cells are never gonna be able to grow across that. So what the owner had done in their good intentions that were misplaced was use disinfectant on this. So that's why I say 
ask your vet about the use of disinfectant when you're managing wounds because this can ensue. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. You, you walk out to the paddock and this is what you find on your horse. First, try and be calm. This is not a lot of blood, right? If it's an arterial spurt, okay, I will give you some adrenaline. <laughs> and what do we do with that wound? Cold water hose it, get the sterile saline on it, whatever you've got to hand, and then the telfa, the dressing, the second layer, the gauze to hold the telfa on, and then the, the padding, and then the bandage at the end. And then, of course, the tape to hold it all in place and the stall wrap to support it if it's at the knee or the hock. And then the vet will come out. So the vet will take care of the definitive wound treatment. They're going to use their bandage scissors and they're going to cut away all your carefully laid plans. But <laughs> they are then going to look, remember that graphic image of the hole in the hawk that just would stop anybody's heart? They will take a, they'll probably sedate the horse a little bit so they can get a closer look in there with a light and see if there's a foreign object in there, see if there's any bones obviously exposed or anything like that, take some x-rays, etc. So they'll clean and remove the damage and dead tissue that's called debridement. Um, and the vet will determine whether they're going to be able to close it or not close it so that the little new skin cells have a little distance or more distance to cross. And then they're going to give you instructions about bandaging and bandage materials to use, follow those. They may change the bandages at first so that they're seeing what's going on with the wound. And once they're confident that it's at an okay place, they'll let you take over from that for sure, especially if you demonstrate the skills that you've learned here on how to place those bandages. And they will also let you know whether they want you to use any ointments on that. We like to help out, we like to put polysporin, we like to do things, but they may not actually help the process and you may just be wasting money or actually damaging those fragile little cells trying to come across. So your role in this is to follow the vet's instructions, of course. Remember that, that awful watermelon leg? Um, follow the vet's instructions and then show them your skills. Show them that you know how to do this. Let them watch you apply the bandage so that they know in full confidence they can walk away and let you do this. And let your vet know immediately if you see any signs of bandage complications. So general signs of infection are increased heat or swelling. Increased pain, like I said, days after the injury has occurred. Not that you can see it unless the skin is clipped and it's a fairly light-skinned animal, but redness or red streaks radiating from a wound. That just means that you've got bugs floating up the lymphatic vessels and they're going to try and get systemic and cause sepsis. Any bad odor coming from it obviously is a clear sign that there's something bad going on. Pus and fluid exuding from the bandage or the wound. Monitor rectal temperature, of course, getting that thermometer out of the first aid kit and using that. Any changes in the horse's stall habits, its behavior, if they're not eating, if they're not drinking, if they're making a mess in their stall, these are all signs that they are in distress. Specific bandage problems, I keep repeating these, but swelling above or below the bandage is not normal. We don't want it. Increased lameness in association with the bandage, stomping, chewing, the bandage feels wet where you see anything coming through that third layer of the bandage.